Hey, I'm sure some of you remember a few videos back. I did a video about stud finders. Well, since that time, I came up with a brand new one. I, I came across this, so I decided to pick it up. So I've got this. Well, I had a brand new one. We're gonna see if it survived and we'll test it right after this. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by my channel here at That Kilted Guy Videos. And yeah, it survived partly because I dropped it in a box of cloth. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a jokester sometime. But what I've got here is what I think is the coolest, nicest stud finder I've ever seen. After I came out with this video about how to use a stud finder correctly and why they often fail, I just happened to see this and hear about this different stud finder so i decided to pick it up and you know what i think you guys are going to like this too so we're going to test this thing and i'm just going to demonstrate some of the capabilities here and we'll kind of compare it to my old standby i probably won't necessarily put these to the full test because i kind of did that in the other video but i'll show you a little bit about the differences so what we have here is this stud finder now how many of you have seen this before raise your hands all right a few of you yeah all right how many have used it before let me know in the comments down below if you guys have familiarity with this and what you think of it now I've played with it a little bit I think it's really cool and by the way if you like learning these kind of things you like videos like this be sure and subscribe you see that uh, subscribe button down below our video if you click that then be sure and click that bell icon because that's how you get notified each time we put out a video otherwise you won't get notified and we also have a new membership option right beside the subscribe button if you want to join that we're going to put out some bonus information for you guys there all right now what's the difference obviously this looks really different so let me just give you a little brief rundown about how this works first of all it works by uh, LED lights on here that light up when it detects the stud behind it, the density difference. But let me read you a little bit about what it says about it here on the package. This is called the ProFinder 6000 Plus and I will put a link to this in the description down below this video. So if you guys want to pick this up, we'll make a small fee on it not much it won't cost you any extra and we do appreciate the support so some of the differences on this are number one it's seven inches wide it runs this way and it has 13 sensors so each one of these leds represents a sensor now let me go over to the back and just compare this little chart here so it says it has 13 sensors compared to a normal stud finder which will have one to two it is seven inches wide versus an inch and a half scanning range on most of them. It will detect uh, real world, world conditions. It says 1.1 inches deep. It says it's always in deep scanning mode. You don't have to activate that separately. That's a nice feature. All right, this is kind of nice too. It runs on AA batteries instead of nine volt. You know, those nine volts are expensive and harder to find when you need one. It uh, displays the stud center and the edges simultaneously. It instantly finds the studs. It doesn't have to be calibrated. That's a nice feature, not having to calibrate it. Because I talked about that on the last video. If you calibrate them wrong, you can get incorrect readings. Well, this one doesn't require that. Uh, you can start the scan anywhere. And it can detect multiple objects at the same time. It also has a built-in bubble level, which can be handy if you're trying to detect, you know, make marks for studs on an even plane here. You don't want to run up and down, say, uh, let's say you're hanging pictures or something. You could slide it across the wall and get marks at the same level. It does have Teflon sliders here, so it slides nice and easy. And it says in the instructions that as long as you keep your hands in this black area, it doesn't mess up the calibration. So you can see if I put my finger behind it, it does. But if I put my hand on top, it doesn't. 
So I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer here so you can see more of what I'm showing you. And then we'll go ahead and demonstrate some more of this. Okay, so let's see here. I'm, I'm watching the monitor here sometime. If you see me looking away, making sure it's showing up here. You can see the LEDs lighting up here when I put my fingers behind it. Because again, on my previous video, if you, as you see in the thumbnail here on the screen, I talked about how these work. And basically they are density scanners. So what it's doing is detecting a difference in the density and once I put my finger back there, there's some more density and it detects that. Well, it's doing the same thing with wood studs. So with this one, because it's scanning this whole thing and each one of these is a sensor, it can detect multiple things at once, which we're gonna test out right here. Each of these green tape marks, as you can see, indicates the width of a stud. So let me explain what I've got set up here. Right here is just a normal 2x4 stud. Here is a double plate like you might find on a header or door jam, different places. Here's a single one that's just close to these to see how two of them being that close affect each other. This one, what I did is I put a piece of half inch plywood on it so it's actually a half inch away from the sheetrock. That's kind of to see how that deep density works. Then over here, I put a two by six going sideways. This would represent like blocking, like fire blocking maybe, only I've turned it sideways. Sometimes it goes the other way, but we're gonna turn it sideways. And then we've got one here. And I did that also to show you how this can screw you up if you come across one of these. And uh, over here is just another single. So we're gonna run through a little bit of testing with them. But I will tell you that another kind of cool feature, I don't think this is too major. I got to remember where it's at. There's a pencil in here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's right here. It slides in here. It's basically a golf pencil. So normally I'm going to have a construction carpenter type pencil handy. But if you just pick this up, this is a convenient way to go. Now I bought this with this case because it's made it's a separate purchase. I'll put links to all this in the description, but as you can see, it fits it really nicely. It's gonna protect it. And it gives you room for, you could stick your owner's manual. You could stick some blank paper in here. I keep my carpenter's pencil with my stud finder. So first, let me do a quick example of how a normal stud finder works. The cheapest ones, this one just beeps. It simply has two lights on here. And if we can get it to calibrate right here and slide it sideways, that light will change color. So I'm gonna zoom in even further here so that you can see a close up of what's happening here. Okay, normally we would place this on the wall, keep our hand away from it so that we don't screw up the calibration, push the calibration and on button, give it a second to calibrate and then start sliding it. One of the problems with this design is if I get my hand over here, sometime it can screw up that calibration, but you would slide it and that would detect like the left edge. You can see it's reading fairly close to the green tape and then the right edge and it kind of missed it there, but that's the simple one. And then you move up to this one that has just more lights and half the time my battery's dead in this. But this one just has four lights. It does the same thing. You have to calibrate it. I've always liked this one because it marks the center. And for what I do, that's usually the most handy, but you still have to calibrate it. And if you get your hand near it, you can see it does mess up the calibration anywhere up here, but that's okay. You keep your hand away, you slide it over and this one. Okay, you can see I'll calibrate it again. It didn't find it the first time. What happens is the ones near it throw it off. If you calibrate these anywhere near another stud, they often just don't read because it's calibrating. It's reading some of that density, some of that density. And so it just doesn't see the difference. Now, if I put this over here and calibrate it off to the side, then I come across it should find it if I went far enough. 
Let's try a little further. This one may be throwing it off. And we finally get a reading, but it's having a hard time reading that deepness there. We get over to this one, it's just struggling with it. So things like this throw these off and that's what often causes you guys a lot of problems in the field. But let's see if this one can overcome this. This is a jungle for one of these. So it says you don't have to calibrate it. So let's just stick it up here and see what it does. And I'm gonna try and keep my fingers out of the way so this shows up. Now, right off the bat, we can see it's lit up from here to here. So that's showing that one and that one at the same time. Now watch if I slide it, the lights just move. Now, if we get over to this one over here, it lights up again and shows that it's seeing another stud over there. Now, it's, I'm, I can tell you it's not perfect, but this thing works a lot better. Now, let's slide over here to the deeper one, and you'll see the little Teflon strips when I catch on my tape, but you'll see that it has a hard time if you come from this side where it was calibrated. It's still calibrating, but it calibrates instantly. But if we go back over here and we start, I found that if I come this way, it can detect that deep stud back in there. Then when it gets over to here, this shallower one, it's, it can't de seem to detect deep and shallow at the same time. But to me, that's kind of a minor inconvenience. It, it is detecting it. It just can't detect it at the same time. Another thing I noticed is it's not dead accurate. You do have LEDs spaced about now this thing says it has a tape measure on it so let's see they're about a half inch apart that's actually a little tape measure right there i know you can't read that on the screen but those are about a half inch apart so there's the one drawback if you will is that it can't be real accurate because of that half inch spacing but when you get over here you see it's reading three lights all the way from right there to there so there's a little variance but it's still it's showing you there's a stud that wide and a stud that wide right there so that's pretty impressive to me now let's see what it does on this wider one only we're going to go this way okay now let's see what it does on this two by six can it handle that it's seven inches wide that's two by six is really only i think five and a half inches wide so you can see it starts finding it and there it's got one out and it's lit all the way to there. So right there, it, it's showing the width of it, not deadly accurate, like I say, but I like this way a lot better. Now, let me show you what happens if you got something this dense across here. If I come across like this, it's reading this one over here and it's starting to read the edge of this one. But now when I get into here where it's just all solid dense, it's not detecting the density difference. It's struggling with that because it's the same density across here. So that's why it's, it's struggling right there. It can't tell you that that's solid. That's where you would need to try going this way and see if maybe that's what you're seeing. And in this case, it does tell you that. Okay, one more thing I want to point out that I pointed out on my last video, but no stud finder is going to be trouble free. Even this one's going to give you some fits now and then. But what you got to take into account is what might be behind the wall. There could be plumbing back here, electrical, buried electrical boxes. You just don't know which way there's lumber running, exactly how it's framed. And I've framed houses and I still can't just guess what's back there so if you try running it a stud finder along this way and it's giving you fits try dropping it down about a foot and try that try going the other way to see if maybe there's some blocking or bracing in there sometimes you have to do a little hunting and pecking but this one seems to give less false signals 
and I'm just really happy with this. So if there's any other questions I haven't answered with this video, let me know. I really appreciate you guys commenting down below because that helps YouTube show our video more. It's those comments, those likes, those thumbs up, sharing, subscribing, all that. That's what YouTube looks at. So we appreciate that. Plus, I want to hear from you guys. So hey, I hope this helped you out. If you found this video informational, helpful, you know, be sure and give us all that stuff, the thumbs up and all that. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video where I'll help you again with some drywall projects, some tools, whatever we come up with. If you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on the next video.